Hello everyone! Welcome to another video. Today we're discussing another one of the OWASP top 10. This time we're looking at identification and authentication failures. Now this actually used to be number two in the previous iterations and it's slidden all the way down to number seven, but it's very relevant and we see these attacks quite often out there in the wild and also because they relate to fairly low hanging fruit. In this video, I'm gonna discuss exactly what it is. We're gonna look at some real life examples with breaches of how this actually unfolds. And of course, we're gonna tell you how to fix it. Before we get into it, please do me a quick favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel. All right, enough about that, let's get into it. Now, a lot of people seem to get confused with this here, identification and authentication failures, and another OS top 10, broken access control. And I just wanna quickly explain the differences between the two. Broken access control is all about what can you do once you've logged in? Authorization, not authentication. Now, this authorization is basically, I'm logged in, but can I view someone else's data? Can I view an admin information when I shouldn't? Things like that. This is all about being able to log in, being able to basically trick an application into thinking that you're someone else through the login process. Now, there's a fairly long tail of all the types of different areas that can be related to this, or CWEs, if you want to go down that path. But I think typically there's four main categories that will cover 99% of everything that happens in here. That is credential stuffing and brute force attacks, default credentials, weak multi-factor authentication, or just non-existent multi-factor authentication, and session management failures. Let's go through each one of these four and break down what exactly they are and a real life scenario that happened with like this that caused this. So let's start with brute force and credential stuffing. I'll start with credential stuffing. Now, if you don't know what credential stuffing is, it's really when you have a user ID and you're trying to log in, and instead of just trying to guess their password, you're using some logic, so you take a list of known passwords. Now this typically comes from other breaches. For example, there's the RockU password set. It has several million passwords in it that have come from previous breaches. And it's basically taking this password set and throwing it in against this, stuffing the credentials into here, hoping to see that it would work. This is a fairly common attack, and I've talked about it in other areas, like the last video where we were talking about security misconfigurations. The other area of this is brute force. Very similar approach, is that instead of using like a list, instead of stuffing known credentials, you're just kind of throwing random characters at it. There's probably some logic behind it. Typically, brute forcing is fairly useless if there's a decent password in place. And typically, attackers will kind of go on one of two things. Either brute force will work in either less than a minute, or it won't work for thousands of years. That's kind of what you're looking at, because the difference between having a really good password and a bad one is not like it's going to be twice as hard. It's going to be one billion times harder, quite, quite literally. So where have we seen these types of credential stuffing attacks actually work? Well, in the last video, I talked about NVIDIA being uh, subject to a credential stuffing attack on their admin panels. This is a good example. Another kind of easier example to think about is when Disney Plus launched in 2019, immediately hundreds of accounts were completely taken over. This is because the attackers kind of had information about the... And this is because the attackers were able to stuff credentials in and log into the Disney's, these, these Disney's accounts, brand new. And this is like very typical of a credential stuffing attack because it's a new application, doesn't have great security yet. All right, let's move on to default credentials. Now this is fairly obvious, but there is a pretty cool example that we can go into. So default credentials are when something that you buy or an application comes with default credentials. Sometimes it's web apps. For example, WordPress used to have default credentials. This caused to so many account takeovers. But where it's really common is IoT devices. Things like printers are like notorious for this. And attackers will actually target these IoT, Internet of Things devices. So basically anything connected to the internet in your house that's not necessarily a computer. And they often come with default credentials in them or hard-coded keys, all these types of things. A really good example of this is the MyRay botnet attack. Now, essentially what happened is there was this botnet, which is essentially a network of computers, but these computers weren't actually always computers. There was an attack group that really targeted internet connected things 
and by targeting default passwords, and they were able to amass an army of all of these little, <laughs> all of these devices, like your light switches, smart light switches, your printers, your fridge, and all of these were turned malicious so the attackers could use them in attacks. And now they didn't go around murdering people, like there's a funny scenario of your fridge trying to strangle you or something, but <laughs> but they were able to launch attacks on behalf of the attack. It's really interesting. And this happens in real life. If you want a funny story about IoT <laughs> devices and default credentials, uh, there was a Navy, not American Navy, but Navy of a different country that was hacked because there was a smart sex toy connected to the network traffic. Anyway, hopefully I don't get banned from you from YouTube for that. But they were able to kind of go through that, get onto the network, hack the Navy. So default password, big deal, especially in IoT devices. The last area that's kind of going to cover a lot of things is session management failures. And this is kind of relating to like session IDs. So when you log into a website, you'll notice when you come back the next day, you don't need to log in again. Why is that? Well, you have a session ID. It's saved on your device. Session ID mismanagement is by basically not putting parameters of when these session IDs can actually be used. Now, session IDs, session tokens, for, or, or session cookies, if you will, are actually really dangerous because they bypass that MFA component. So if someone steals it, maybe by sniffing traffic or by installing something malware onto your computer, then they can kind of get past those other parameters. So it's really important when you have session IDs that you have parameters around them. Now this includes when they expire, they must expire, they have to at some point, well they don't have to, but they really should. And then what event will trigger like a needing a new session ID? Now this could be something to do with using a new device, coming in from a different IP address, coming in in suspicious hours, all of these types of things can actually trigger the need to re-log in and get a new session ID. So we have to make sure that we're revoking the old session ID and kind of logging in again. So what is kind of an, an example of a session uh, a, a session token mismanagement? There was a really bad one involving Facebook. And Facebook had a feature where you could view as. And LinkedIn has this, other social networks have this, where you can view what your profile looks like as a different person. The problem was when you click this, it actually generated a session ID for the person that you were trying to view your account as. So someone could sniff this out, kind of get it and then log in to that person. It was a pretty bad <laughs> vulnerability to have. So how do we avoid this mess? Well, there are a number of things that we absolutely should do. For example, use strong password hashing. Now, if you don't know what hashing is, I'll make another video on that, but it's essentially transforming your password into something that you can verify it with that doesn't actually save the password itself. Now, good hard password hashing is something like Bycrypt or Argon2. Do not, I repeat, do not use MD5. MD5 is an outdated and vulnerable hashing method. This next one is very important. Rate, limit, login, attempts, all right? I cannot make that more clear. Make sure you have a mechanism in place that if someone tries to log in multiple times with a different password, that they, that they get blocked out of their account at some point. Always make sure that you have multi-factor authentication available in your application. And if you have any kind of sensitive accounts, I think it's a good idea to force people to use it. In my personal opinion, we should all get used to just using MFA by default. I know some people hate it. They have, haven't had the authentication app or some other method. It's the best way to go through it. When you're dealing with session tokens and session ID tokens, then make sure that you invalidate these tokens definitely after a period of time, but also upon triggering events, like a user logging in on a new device, for example. Hopefully this next one I don't have to say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't use default passwords, ever. <laughs> Never give your users an option to use a default password. Some people, some accounts do this when they first sign up and they give you like a default password to use. No, don't do this. If you are gonna do that, make sure you have to uh, generate a new password on the first login. And the final one that I really wanna talk about is the password reset flows. Now this is a, another area that people kind of tend to exploit is that when you need to forgot, go through the process of forgetting your password, make sure that you have a very secure flow of doing this. That means that you should never expose your password. You should get them to generate a new password. Don't ever give them their old password. The next video we're gonna look at is software integrity and data failures. Sounds boring will be exciting, I promise. So subscribe to the channel and have a great day and I'll see you in the next video, guys.